Hi, my name is Francisco, and in case you're writing the results section of your dissertation or your thesis, I have a few suggestions for you. The first thing to keep in mind is obviously the purpose of this chapter or this section in your, uh, in your work. And it's obviously to report the results that you have found, uh, given the methodology that you set and that you explain on the, on the chapter before. So one of the very important things here on this section is to structure it really well. It has to be easy for the reader to follow as you're going through your results. Because uh, depending on how your study went, you can have many different tables or many different things that you measured. Um, if you had also different research objectives. So it can be really overwhelming. So you have to always keep in mind that someone is reading that piece of work. And um, the, the easier it is for the reader to follow what you've done, the more likely that you're gonna be able to convey the results and what you're actually trying to, or what you actually found from your work. So what I would suggest to you is divide really clearly, like for example, if you had more than one objective, that you uh, separate the results section by starting with objective one or addressing objective one or, or ad addressing objective two. And for each stage where you had data collection, that you separate them clearly and you number them separately. So it can be easy for whoever's reading to follow what you've done. Another thing is um, always remind the reader what the actual objective was. Uh, what were you trying to find out? Yeah, because remember, uh, you, you, you will have stated your objective in your introduction chapter. And it's been a while now once the reader's in the results section. So it's always good to refresh to the reader what the actual objectives were or what were you actually trying to find out. Following that, uh, what I would also suggest is, especially if you have um, statistics, so if you have numerical findings, um, make sure that you go through well how to report those numerical findings and you create tables where something really important, only report information that you can and that you will explain. So it's very common that when you run a test on SAS or on SPSS or any other uh, software, that's gonna give you more information than what you actually need to address your, um, your objective or to test the hypotheses, for example, if you're doing hypothesis testing. Um, but make sure that you only report what is actually relevant for that particular test because very often students will report a bunch of stuff because that's what it came out on the table but it's irrelevant to what you're actually doing. And then it gets confusing for the reader. So make sure that you screen wisely the results that are actually relevant to what you set out to do. One thing for you not to do in your results section, and especially for my student, please don't do this, is um, simply copying and, and pasting tables from SPSS or for any statistical software or even sometimes from survey websites. Uh, do not do this, yeah? Create your own tables and again, report information uh, that you can and will explain. Make sure to label those uh, tables correctly. Make sure that every time you have a table that you've labeled, that you insert that also in a text that you're referring to the table with the results. That's really important because then it, it structures really well and it, it's much easier for the reader to follow. If you're, do, if you're having qualitative findings, uh, so if you had interviews and so on, um, one thing that I would definitely suggest for you to avoid is again overusing quotes from the, uh, from the uh, respondents. So the idea of qualitative analysis is not to just be copy and pasting quotes. Quotes is very important in qualitative analysis to highlight the themes that you have identified from the answers. But if you're just using quotes all the time, then that's not really a qualitative analysis. And it's just going to cluster your results section. And again, you're gonna get the reader lost. And if the reader's lost, then it's definitely gonna compromise how they see your work. And one final suggestion for the results section is uh, if you have space in your word count, in your page count, um, in every main section, have a table where you summarize all of the results. And that's really good because the, the reader will have gone through all of your analysis. And then in the end, by having a, a table that summarizes everything, then you can clearly visually see uh, what you found. So if you did for you, if you tested, for example, many different hypotheses, then you can see all of your hypotheses and if they were confirmed or if they were rejected. 
Um, if you did qualitative analysis, that you have all of the main factors that you're looking at, the themes that you've, uh, that you've identified. Or if you just did any other type of analysis that you can somehow um, quickly summarize all of the findings because uh, that's going to make it really easy for the reader and that's always a good thing. Yeah, so just to summarize really quickly, remember to structure the chapter or the section of your work really well. Remember, keep always in mind the reader that someone is going through that. So the easier it is for the reader to follow, the, the, the better they're going to see your work. Make sure to separate the different objectives if you have more than one objective of data collection. Remind the reader of what those objectives were. Make sure that you go through statistics books to make sure that you uh, uh, report the, the findings really well. Uh, make sure that you only report information that you can and will explain. That's also really important. Uh, never, ever, ever copy and paste tables from SPSS, from any statistical software and paste directly in your work. Do never do this. Yeah. And if you have uh, space and word count and everything's fine, then insert tables in the end of the section where you can summarize all of the findings so that the uh, reader can visually see quickly everything that you discussed before, everything summarized in one table. So those would be my suggestions. Uh, don't forget to uh, discuss everything with your supervisor. Don't forget to check on musicstats.org for the section there on thesis support. There's a bunch of more uh, further material for you, to, um, for you to have a look at. Yeah, and while you're doing your analysis and while you're reporting your results, one thing that I would suggest is listen to a song by Jimi Hendrix called Are You Experienced? Put yourself a nice port wine, listen to Jimi Hendrix, life will be good. All the absolute best, take care, bye bye.